Good to talk to you, sir. So if you were still at the Fed, you. what would you be doing? What would you be doing now? Well, at this point, having made the statement that Jay Powell made on Friday, they're pretty much locked into cutting rates at the next meeting, which is a couple of weeks away. There's even a possibility they'll do it before. I think that depends on how much panic spreads not so much in the general populace, that that'll come a little later probably, how much panic spreads in the markets. So this morning I think they're breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief, but who knows what's going to happen the rest of today, much less tomorrow and Wednesday. So the market is expecting a 50 basis point cut in, what, two weeks at the March meeting? Is that realistic? Right. I think it's realistic. If you had asked me before this, corona business popped up, I would have said that was a crazy expectation, but of course nobody had it then. I think given the um, reactions of the market last week, and yeah. especially the Powell statement on Friday, I don't think that's a crazy expectation at all. I feel like the difficult part for the Fed must be, and Alan, you've been in these conversations, you know, we need to do shock and awe. We need to get the market confidence up. We need to come out ahead of right. what is potentially a demand shock in this country as a result of the spreading coronavirus. At the same time, we don't want to alarm anyone into thinking that we are terrified. <laughs> How do you deal right. with that balance? No, I think that's right. That's the, that's the line you have to walk. I think 50 is probably walking that line. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say, Sarah, is that you said a demand shock. Uh, it will become a demand shock if and when people stop going shopping, stop going to the movies, stop going to sporting events, concerts, etc. We may never get to that point in the United States, or we may. And that, of course, is the huge problem that the Fed has. Nobody has the slightest idea whether, not to mention when, uh, we'll come to the point where it's a serious demand shock. In the first instance, it's a supply shock. It's disrupting supply lines uh, all over the world, and that certainly includes us. Well, that, that's something we're more certain about, obviously, yeah. Alan. I mean, what tools address that, at least from the Fed's standpoint? Well, this is the problem. The Fed doesn't have tools to, adjust, to uh, um, combat a supply shock. They learned that painfully back in the 70s when we started getting oil shocks. Remember those? And um, the Fed had, had a lever, interest rates, which it still has, over demand, and particular over the interest-sensitive components of demand. So housing, automobile purchases, business investment, things like that are responsive to interest rates. Ordinary household spending, like on groceries and restaurants and putting gas in your car and so on, don't really show responsiveness to interest rates. You wouldn't expect that they would because they're not bought on, well, let's say they're not bought on credit. They're bought on credit cards. So that's very, very yeah. short-term credit. They're not bought on bank loans or bonds or anything uh, like that. And that's, that's where the Fed has real leverage. Well, what are the dangers then in a 50 basis point cut, particularly with the 10-year yield already at 1.60%? I think to the extent there's a danger, I don't want to exaggerate this, I don't think there's a huge danger, but I think the danger is you may come to regret later when you have a demand, if you have a demand shock to deal with, that you spent your ammunition too early. I, I wouldn't well, that's put that high right. on the danger list, but it's a bit of a danger. Well, one of the arguments among the Fed watchers that you might get a 50 is that they would rather do it now than become the topic of a political debate even closer to the election. How valid is that? Well, I, I, I wish it wasn't valid, but with President Trump in the White House, it unfortunately is valid. I'd like to put a better face on this and call it a kind of a psychological operation. The Fed is trying to show the nation that it's, that, that it's awake, that it has things it can do, that it's concerned, and it will provide support for the economy as need be. That, that's what this is about, because right now, um, popping interest rates down uh, 25 or even 50 basis points is not really going to do much. 
it's only going to do nothing for the spread of the disease. And it's, I don't think it's going to do much to ameliorate the economic impacts of the disease, which at least now are supply shocks. So why bother? Well, as I said, it's a psychological operation. First you start with work. So it would be nice if you could just stop with words. You remember Mario Draghi in 2012? A few well-chosen words work miracles. Uh, but I use the word miracles because you can't expect that to happen very often, if ever. I'm not sure Draghi expected it in 2012. He probably didn't. Uh, but Jay Powell's words, which were perfectly fine and well-chosen on Friday, did not work miracles. And... Uh, so they're trying to do what they can to prop up the psyche.